Hi, this is Joachim for statisticsglobe.com and in this video I will explain how to split a data frame in the R programming language. So in the video I'm going to show you several examples and all of these examples are based on the data frame that we can create with lines 2 to 4 of the code. So if you run these lines of code you will see that at the top right of R Studio a new data frame object appears. And we can also have a look at this data frame by clicking on the data object and then a new window is opened. And in this window you can see the structure of our data frame. So as you can see our data consists of 10 rows and 3 columns x1, x2 and x3. Now let's assume that we want to split the rows of our data frame into two different data frames. Then we can apply the code that you can see in lines 6 and 8. So in line 6 of the code I'm creating a new data frame which is consisting of the first five rows of our data. And in line 8 of the code I'm creating a new data frame which is consisting of the last five rows of our data. So if you run these two lines of codes, you will see that at the top right of RStudio two new data frame objects appear. And we can have a look at the first data frame by clicking on data 1a. And then you can see that this data frame consists of the first five rows. And if you click on the second data frame, data 1b, then you can see that this data frame consists of the rows 6 to 10 of our original data frame. So in this first example, I have shown you how to split a data frame into two different data sets manually. However, it is also possible to split a data frame into two different data sets randomly. And that is what I'm going to show you in the next example. So in this example, I'm first setting a seed in line 10 of the code to make our example reproducible. And then I'm specifying a dummy indicator using the rbinum and the nrow functions. So if you run line 11 of the code, you will see that a new vector object appears at the top right of RStudio. And this vector object consists of zeros and ones. So in the next step, we can use this dummy indicator to split our data. So in line 13 of the code, I'm creating a data frame where our dummy indicator is equal to zero. And in line 15 of the code, I'm creating another data frame where our dummy indicator is equal to 1. So as you can see, we have created two new data frames at the top right of RStudio, data 2a and data 2b. And we can also have a look at these data frames. And as you can see, the first data frame, data 2a, consists of the rows 1, 2, 3, 6, 7 and 10. So we have randomly selected these rows to be in the first data frame. And the second data frame, data 2b, consists of the other rows that were not contained in the data frame, data 2a. You can also see that the first data frame, data 2a, consists of six rows, and the second data frame, data 2b, consists of only four rows. This is because we have randomly assigned each row to one of the data frames without specifying the number of rows that we want to store in one of the data frames. So in the first and in the second example, I have shown you how to split data frames by rows. However, it is also possible to split a data frame by columns of a data frame. And this is what I want to show you in the third example of this tutorial. So in this third example, I'm going to split our data into two different data sets, whereby the first data frame will consist of the columns x1 and x3. And the second data frame will consist of a single variable x2. We can create these two data frames by specifying a vector consisting of the variable names of the variables that we want to store in the data frame. So in line 17 of the code, you can see that here I'm creating a new data frame that consists of the columns x1 and x3. So if you run this line of code, you will see that a new data frame object appears at the top right of RStudio, which is called data 3a. If we click on this data object, you can see that a new data frame window appears. And as you can see, this data frame consists of all the rows, but only of the variables x1 and x3. 
Yeah, and similar to this code, we can also create a second data frame, which consists only of the variable x2. And this is what you see in line 19 of the code. However, what you also can see is that this data object is not a data frame because we have stored only one single variable in this data. And for that reason, this data frame column was converted to a vector. So in this video, I have shown you three examples on how to split data frames into two different data sets in the R programming language. However, in case you want to learn more on this topic, you could check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on the homepage, I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can check it out there. And furthermore, if you have liked the video, I would be very happy if you leave me some positive feedback in the comments and make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notifications in future when I'm releasing new videos to the channel. That's it for this video. Thanks a lot. See you next time.